we're going to start with shortest path spending trees, our networks one unit, and then we're going to move into networks two. I've just separated them out into shortest path, minimum spending trees, and then for the second part, maximum flow minimum cut theorem, but they're all going to be obviously in the same section. Um, don't answer a poll. I want you to let me know in the chat, what do you think is the hardest? Shortest path, minimum spanning trees, or maximum flow minimum cut? Just is interesting to me. And if you have any questions attached to that, again, let me know in the chat what those questions are. Okay, the networks topic is split into two branches. Networks, network concepts, and critical path analysis. So we have shortest path and minimum spanning trees under network concepts. And we have critical path analysis, which is maximum flow minimum cut theory. This is all equally tested. It's just split into those two sections for the ease of having an understandable curriculum and syllabus. Okay. So the shortest path is a path between two vertices in a network for which the sum of the weight of its edges is minimized. Essentially, what's the quickest way or the shortest way to get from one place to another? What is the shortest path from A to B? We have A, we have B. Let's go through three different paths. Let's maybe do the first one in red. Our first path would be four plus six plus one. And we write our paths as the letters we pass through. A, C, D, B, four plus six plus one, that's going to be 11. Our next path could be A, E, F, and B. And that would be six plus five plus one, which is going to be 11. And then we have, oh, sorry, that's going to be 12. So if you can't count today. Then we have our final path, which would be A, G, H, B, A, G, H, B. And that's four plus six plus two, which would also be equal to 12. Where does that leave us? As I said, we've written all of those out. Our first option, which was A, C, D, and B running over the top four plus six plus one is going to be our shortest path. And we're going to write it as A, C, D, B, and then we wanna say shortest is 11. Okay, we're going to work through these. Find the shortest path between A and H. I want to start, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. Um, how do we find the shortest path? Let's start by doing it just by guessing, and then we'll see if there's a quicker way to do it. So A and H, let's have a look. We've got four, one, two, and five. So four, one, two, and five is going to be 12. So we have a 12 option. We could go nine, five, um, which is going to be 14. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this five, my apologies. 14, we've got... Um, Four, four, five, which is going to be um, 13. And then we've got four, three, four, five. I don't think we're going to get shorter than 12. So for the first one, let's say A, C, K, I, H, which is going to be 12. C and F, we can go from, and let's check. Yep, there we go. We've got that one right. C and F. Um, we have, where are we? C and there's F. We could do four, one, two, and four. Four plus four is eight, plus three is 11. We have 11. We could do three, four, that's seven, plus five is 12, plus another five is 17. That's a lot longer. We could do four, no, that's really the only one we can do. C and F is 11. And our last one, I and B, where is I? I is up here. We want to find I to B. We could do five, one, two, six, which would be eight plus six is 14. Is there any shorter I? Probably not. So I and B, 14. 
So that was our shortest paths. There are kind of quicker ways to find these. I'll go through them in a second. So a tree, if we're talking about spanning trees or a tree, a minimum spanning tree, a tree is a network or part of a network that contains no circuits or cycles. So if you were to look at a network and it looked something like that, that would be a circuit or a cycle because it's closed. If it looked something like this, that would be a, oh, not like that, sorry, something like this, that would be a tree. A minimum spanning tree is a set of edges that connects every vertex in a network. So when we solve minimum spanning trees, we can use two different algorithms, Prims or Kruskal. You may have also heard of Dijkstra's. I'm not gonna go over that one today, it's not super necessary. Prims or Kruskal's, and you can be asked questions on using one of them. Prims algorithm, Suggest is the guy who came up with this. Prim is a guy. Chris Cool. You know what? Maybe they aren't guys. Let me confirm for you right now. Prim is a person. Um, let's double check because if it is a woman, that would be amazing. Prim's algorithm. Um, I think it's maybe a man. Oh, Chris Cool's algorithm. Unfortunately, I think they may be men. Yeah. Okay. Their algorithms, these guys' algorithms, basically give you ways of finding the shortest or the minimum spanning tree. So we first select the shortest edge, and then we continue by selecting the shortest attached edge with prim. So we start somewhere, and we go on a path. We just pick the next shortest, next shortest, next shortest, next shortest. So how does this work in practice? I'll show you in a second. Cross schools, we look at the graph, we find the shortest edge, we highlight it. We step back. We find the next shortest edge. We highlight that. We step back. We keep highlighting all of the shortest edges until we've created our spanning tree. So let's do an example. We're going to find the minimum spanning tree first using cross or prims, then we're going to use cross schools. Prims. Let's start by the the rule is we have to connect everything. We can't create a circuit or a cycle. Let's start at A. Four, nine, or eight. I'm gonna go for the four. One, three, or four, go for the one. There's only one option, two, four, five, or five. Mm, this is where I scan ahead. I go, mm, mm, mm. let's go for this five because this already has a four over here. I'd prefer to use that than to use the five. Um, we have five, eight, or five. We have to pick one of them. Let's pick the five. Um, we then have to pick the four. Two is the next shortest. One is obviously shortest. We now need to connect the B. We've got six, eight, or 13. So we come back down here and we're going to pick the six. That, oh, and we've got to get the J as well. Come back up to the J, three or four. I'm going to pick the three. That would be prims. Now we'll do crystals in another color. Let's do it in... Um, orange. Um, let's start at A and we, or we start at the shorter, sorry. So highlight all the ones, one, one, no, the ones, highlight all the twos, two, two, no, the twos, highlight the threes, three, no more threes, highlight the fours. Now we're not going to highlight this one because it would close it off. Um, oh, I've just realized I missed that four in my prims. We do need to connect, um, Oh no, we'll leave like that because I do want to show you actually why that's a good thing. We're going to use the four here. Um, we've got a four here. Four here. That's it. We're going to use all the fives. I'm going to highlight this five. I'm going to highlight. I'm not going to do this one because it will close it off. And I'm not going to do this one because it will close it off. Six. And have I missed anything? No, everything's connected. Now notice how we've got a four for this one and we've got a five for this one. This is why I stand by cross schools. Cross schools is the better algorithm because you're actively highlighting all the shortest ones you can find at any one point in time. You're not moving ahead and highlighting. See here, we went, oh, well, you know, we don't want to do the four because we've already closed it off. We've got to do a five or a five. Let's go for the five. We didn't have to do the five. We could have back here taken a four. That's why I think prims is flawed. 
There's probably easy ways to use prims in which I've done incorrectly, but I think cross schools is better when we talk about minimum spanning trees. Notice how I haven't formed a network. If I had closed this off or this off or this off or this off, we would have a network and it would not be a minimum spanning tree. All right, find the minimum spanning tree of the network diagram below. We're going to work through this together. Don't panic. We're going to use cross schools because I think it's best. Let's start by highlighting all of the ones. One, 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 one. And I'm just showing you honestly how I would do this if I was in an exam. Those are all of the ones. Now we get the twos, two, two, two. Get all of those twos. And you can genuinely just highlight all of them as you go, unless it's creating a network. That is all the twos. Let's get the threes. Three, 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 three. Not this one. We don't want to create a network. Not this one. We don't want a network. And not this one. We don't want a network. That looks like all the threes. Grab the fours. Four, four, four. We're missing this being connected. We're missing this being connected. We can use that for. And then we kind of scan ahead. We don't really need any other fours because we just need to connect this. And there we go. That's our minimum spanning tree. That's how cross schools, I think, is the most efficient because it's really getting you through all of your options for every number at once instead of looking ahead. All right, we have another question here. Draw a minimum spanning tree on the following network. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. One, one, do we have any more ones? Nope. We've got two, two. We then have three. No more threes. Four, four, four. No more fours. Five. And we don't really need anything else. Look ahead. What else does it need to be connected to? We need the six. Boom. There's our shortest uh, minimum spanning tree. Okay, this is a practice question from a practice paper. The diagram represents a network with weighted edges. Draw a minimum spanning tree for this network and determine its length. Let's do that question first. So we're going to um, draw it onto the diagram. Minimum spanning tree here. Let's start with our, oh, let's use, let's see if I can just get that off and use a pen instead. Hold on. Okay, we've got, we've got one no other ones we've got two 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 and two we've got a lot of twos and then we've got three and we just need to connect the three and everything's connected the network is revised by adding another vertex k edges a k and c k have weights of 12 and 10 we see them up here we want to find the length first. So let's go back through. 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 is going to be um, 14. So we add, we're going to write that down here, 14. We now need to use one of these. We're obviously going to use the shortest one. And it's now 24. And C above was referencing the fact that I would have drawn it onto the sheet. Okay, so that...